Um, okay, I'll give you guys a minute to come in. I want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for uh, being a part of the Business Survival Series. We're going to be talking today about reverse engineering competitors. This is going to be a lesson for people that are practical. If you are practical, then if you're a practitioner, if you enjoy uh, actually doing things and trying to control your own destiny, well, this is going to be for you. If you are a dreamer, if you are into wasting time and binge watching shows and just being all doom and gloom and Debbie Downer, then this might not be a lesson for you. Uh, it's going to be a great one. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities for people that know how to utilize them. And today I felt about talking about a very, very practical subject. So let's see. I want to make sure that I can tune in, that you guys can see me. Yep. Okay, great. I have people coming in here, so that's very, very good. All right. Fantastic. So let's get to it. I'll give you guys a chance uh, to start coming in. Uh, any of you guys that are watching the replay, thank you for watching this. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, this is going to be a great, great um, episode on the Business Survival Series. A couple of things that are happening that I want to just get into a little bit of housekeeping before we move on into the subject of the day. Number one, did you already take advantage of the opportunities that the government is giving to you in the United States? I don't know where you are at, I don't know what country you are part of, but did you already take advantage of these opportunities like the Paycheck Protection Program, the Emergency Disaster Loan, or Emergency Disaster, I think that's what it's called, EIDL. Uh, there are many, many programs that you can take advantage of as an entrepreneur, as a solopreneur, as a sole proprietor, whatever it is, it's something that you can actually qualify for. So I recommend that you look into that and get your research. We, my businesses, have already taken advantage of them and we have gotten the help that uh, we're not going to deny uh, because in this era, any help is actually going to be quite important for any of us to continue surviving. I'm going to try to give you guys in today's um, episode on today's uh, session, I'm going to try to show you inside some of the AGM numbers, what we're doing here inside the agency, what results we're accomplishing, because let me tell you something, we are rolling full steam ahead and we're accomplishing some very, very great things, sales, numbers, audiences, uh, attention, all over the place, we're doing more than we've ever done before right now. So my strategy that I've been talking about over the last uh, month and a half or so if you implemented that strategy into your strategies for your business, you will inevitably see results because it does work and we have implemented it across many, many different accounts already. Okay, so I see some more people joining. Thank you for being here. Just so you guys know, we are live right now simultaneously on Facebook and on YouTube. We're live on both places and let me just go ahead and confirm that right now. Uh, yes, we are live. And um, that's great. So you guys can watch me on either of the platforms and um, it depends on what your favorite platform is. So you're gonna be able to watch the replay and watch it at your own convenience. But hey, it's Friday afternoon. It's Friday, five o'clock over here in the Eastern time zone. And what a great thing to learn about going into the weekend so you can sit down and, uh, and implement some of these strategies into your business. Uh, I heard somebody the other day talk about uh, what's going on today uh, worldwide, we, have, we don't have any more weeks. We have yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and that's just the way it is. So I don't know how your days are going by. I would love to see your comments. I have my phone in here. I'm seeing your comments. So on Facebook, those of you guys that are here, uh, comment below. Let me know if you can hear me well. If you can see me well, how's it coming across to you? If you can see this screen really well, if you can read it, let me know. Give me your feedback. I would love to hear from you guys in regards to that. Okay, Kathy says, hi, Manuel. Thank you. Back for more learning, says Adam. Uh, Shakru says, you are great. Thank you, Shakru. Appreciate it very much. Definitely help me, guys, spread the word. If you appreciate my content, if you appreciate my energy in helping you guys survive this difficult era, go ahead and hit that button that says share. It's a very, very clear button at the bottom left of your phone or in your desktop uh, that says share. So help me reach more people that I can help with my mission. As you guys know, I'm not here to sell them anything. I'm here to provide value and to help them survive. That is my number one goal and my number one obsession. Okay, so today's episode, what is it, what is it about? Okay, well, I want to help you guys get ideas rolling and get out of analysis paralysis. 
I want to help you guys learn how to understand what you should be doing and get it done. Stop being paralyzed in regards to what should I talk about, what should I do, how much should I do, what type of things should I do uh, or talk about, should I do podcasts, should I do videos, should I do articles, should I do, what the heck should I do in order for me to get the attention? Because again, uh, not to be redundant, uh, I do want to repeat over here the things that we've been talking about recently. If I go over here to my uh, recent files, and I'm going to just take one minute to go over the battle plan for COVID-19. The battle plan for COVID-19. So let's see. Uh, that was right. Where is it at? That's going to be probably around. No, that's not going to be it. It's going to be here. Let me see. One second, guys. While I try to get this one. It's going to be this one. Okay, one second. Okay, so here it is, all right? So just a quick recap, recap, all right? In order to get this done, you got to have an idea on what type of content you're going to put out. What is your message? What is your superpower? So this is a strategy. So if you guys haven't been here uh, around for a while, if you haven't been on my content, uh, you might have not seen me talking about the step-in-step formula. Omnipresence, you want to be everywhere. You want to talk with reality. Tell, tell, them, tell them what's going on. Give them the reality of the world and how you can help them with your information. Be a stabilizing influence. Don't be a Debbie Donner. Be a positive individual, a positive influence over them. That's going to be the best way to go about it. Provide value. Build audiences. Build lists. Build audiences of people that you can help, continue helping and providing value with. You do that by doing a lot of Facebook Lives, YouTube Lives, Instagram content, Instagram TV, Instagram stories, Facebook stories, LinkedIn, uh, email, email broadcast, communication, a lot of communication, omnipresent. And that's, that's exactly how you want to go, go about these first five steps. A lot of communication. You want to provide a ton of value because when you have a lot of people that listen to you, in my case, for example, I have right now uh, 40 people on my Facebook Live, uh, and uh, some more people are going to keep on joining, right? So this video gets seen thousands of times by the time that we're done, all organically, without me investing a single penny on advertising. Why? Because I'm providing value. I'm giving them something that is going to help them with their business. I'm giving you something that is going to help you improve your marketing. And right now, guess what? Marketing has become more important than ever because if you don't know how to market, you don't know how to sell on a bad economy. When the economy is booming, it's so much easier to be able to get a business up and running. It's always a challenge no matter what. Being an entrepreneur is never an easy thing. But when the economy has gone through a meltdown, it makes it that much more challenging. I can tell you one thing that I'm excited about. I have been an entrepreneur only during a booming economy. So I always wondered what was going to happen when the economy started collapsing. Because I knew it was going to happen at some point. I didn't know exactly when it was going to happen, but I knew it would happen at some point. We've been on a growing economy since 2008, 2009, since the economy collapsed back in the real estate boom, uh, real, estate, real estate explosion that we went through, right? The uh, subprime mortgage market that we went through in the United States. This caused a recession in the United States, and we started recovering shortly after. So we've been expanding for the last 12 years in this particular economy. I built my business really starting in 2012. Natural Slim was created in the United States uh, 2010, but we really didn't do much until really 2012 with our YouTube channel and our content strategy and everything. So we started doing Natural Slim, uh, going, uh, going heavy at that. I started doing my own, my own brand, uh, which is a bed sheets brand, if you guys don't know that story. Uh, and I started doing all those things in the middle of an economic expansion. The agency, AGM Marketing, my agency, which has 60 staff now, and we do a lot of great marketing for a lot of great people. Uh, we started five years ago, um, and it was in the middle of an economic expansion. And because of that, I always wondered what was going to happen once the economy co collapsed. Am I a fake entrepreneur or am I a real one? What's the difference? The fake entrepreneur cannot make it on difficult economies. The real entrepreneur thrives no matter what the economic landscape looks like. And that's the reality, and I have been seeing it. Uh, for example, here in Natural Slim, we're breaking records. 
We're breaking records week after week, and we are getting more attention than ever. If you look at my dad, if you look at his YouTube channel, if his Facebook page, and our content, we're getting more attention than we've ever gotten ever before in history. Uh, some of our accounts are booming. I am doing some great things with some of the people that I work with every single day. Our um, actual clients are full of incredible results across the board especially people that were set up with the online world. They were set up with pages and YouTube channels and online shops and they knew how to sell online and they have memberships and products they could sell or Amazon brands. These guys are doing okay. We are actually ourselves in natural sense, we're breaking records. So because of that, I'm here today to talk to you guys about, hey, guess what? I was right. I always had this feeling and this idea that if you really became a master marketer, there's no economy that could hit you. There's no financial condition that can actually affect you in the world. You control your own destiny. That is the beauty of marketing. In our case, we have a government shutdown. We have an, uh, a countrywide shutdown. Uh, places are shut down. Hey, today I went, uh, I had my kids with me because uh, these days, as you guys can probably understand, we are spending more time with our kids than usual or with our family than usual. It's great. We are getting closer up with our families. That's one of uh, the silver linings that we all have in front of us, right? So what I can tell you is that a month ago, I used to go to Starbucks, 6 p.m. close, 4 p.m. close. I went there today and they closed at 2 p.m. What the heck? They close at 2 p.m. now? So what I would tell you is that we're, we're going through a government shutdown. We're going through all these things right now, and, and still, despite that, I got people buying my stuff. I got people actually purchasing products, purchasing services, buying digital memberships, and all that stuff is happening. So we're not about to be done in this e-commerce online world. We're just getting started. So again, my job is to tell you guys that the opportunity is large for those ones that actually obsess over becoming good at marketing. How do you become a good at marketer? I wasn't a good marketer. I actually was no one. A few years ago, I didn't even know what the heck I was going to do with my life. Having gone bankrupt and having to restart and rebuild myself from no idea what even from. I had a good tennis. I was a good tennis player growing up. I messed around in life a lot. I got into a lot of trouble. I wasn't a good student. What the heck do I have? I just dedicated a lot of time to becoming a good marketer by studying because at first, I wanted to be able to make some money. And now I want to be able to help a lot of people because I have made a lot of money. So my obsession has become helping you guys along the way. If you become a good marketer, meaning that you know how to capture attention, marketer equals a capturing attention. A bad marketer equals no attention capturing. It's as simple as that. If you're a good marketer, you know how to capture attention. There's another element to it, but we're not going to get too much into it, but it's basically over here you see that I'm putting on the step number six of the formula, becoming an expert marketer. Why? Why? Because I do see marketers that know how to capture attention, quote unquote. They know how to capture attention, but they don't know how to sell their products and services. And that's also a problem. And you gotta know how to sell. Also, you gotta know how to get people interested in your offers because if you have a billion followers but your offers are absolutely terrible, then that's also gonna present a problem. Now, if you have a lot of followers, you might have at least enough to be able to pay your rent or you know, food or things like that because you have a lot of it. So attention is senior, but if you don't know how to sell to people, that's also gonna present a problem. So this is your formula. So I've been getting questions from people. Uh, I got more people here on Facebook. If you guys can help me, Comment below, let me know where you're tuning in from, all right? Um, let me know um, if you wanna comment, give me some data, what is your business? Give me some feedback. I wanna make sure that I see a lot of you guys engaging with me and commenting here. I am simultaneously live on Facebook and YouTube. I'm not looking at any engagement and comments on YouTube. I'm looking at my Facebook page right now. Uh, so let me know, guys. I see some of the comments coming in, but I don't see enough based on the amount of people that I have here. So. Um, Keep me posted on how's, how's it going over there for, on your end. And anything that you would like to communicate to me, I would love to hear right here, okay? So this is your battle plan for this particular era. And moving forward for the next couple of years, this is how you want to win the business game in today's environment. Omnipresence, you want to be everywhere. You want to talk with reality. You want to be a stabilizing influence. 
Do you want to provide value? Do you want to build audiences? Why do you want to build audiences? Because if you build audiences, you become a marketing expert. And you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to show you something practical about the process of building audiences. Because people ask me, what are you talking about building audiences? Manuel, when you say building digital audiences, what the heck are you talking about? What, what do you say when you say, you talk, you talk about things like digital footprints. What, do, what does that even mean? Well, I'm going to give you guys just a very basic overview of what that means in the digital world and how simple it is to get that done. So I'll show you by sharing my screen. And then you're going to be able to sell to your best audiences. Okay. So you got to have that plan in place. And let me go back over here, reversing your competitors. And I have a formula for you guys today that I want you to implement because if you don't have a clue, okay, if you don't have a clue on how to market your products, how to be omnipresent, what to talk about, you don't even know where to start and you are going through analysis paralysis, this particular episode will take you out of that condition. Little side note over here, I got one of my guys, his name is Ollie. Uh, he's one of my executives here. He's my chief operations officer. He is putting forward a challenge, and I thought it was a great idea, and I absolutely loved it. And he's talking about doing 15 consecutive days of Facebook Lives or live content anywhere you'd like. Live content, just talking and just being yourself and getting used to hearing your own voice and talking to the world no matter what anybody says, just putting yourself out there every day. It is a 15-day challenge. I think it's an absolute great idea and I support that. So if you guys want to get going, I did an episode two days ago on Facebook Live also and YouTube Live in which I talk about specifically the subject of utilizing the platforms that we've given access to to do Facebook and YouTube Live very, very specifically. So that's very import important. Okay, so Rebecca says on Facebook Live, network marketing from uh, Switzerland, says Harold. Okay, great. Uh, the final says in beautiful Panama City, I, uh, Central America. That's great. Wow. There is a, there's an actual city, uh, Nathaniel, called Panama City in Florida, which has a beach next to it, which is one of my favorite beaches in the world. Uh, it's an incredible beach. Clear water, where I live, supposedly is the number one beach in the United States. Uh, I disagree, even though I live here. There's a beach called Destin, D. E-S-T-I-N, next to Panama City. Incredible, very beautiful, specifically in a certain, um, you, go to the, you go in the summer, June, July, August, that, those waters are crystal clear, beautiful like pools. Very good. So let's get to it, guys. Here's the formula, all right? And uh, this is important because, again, this is going to take you away from the analysis paralysis. And I'm calling this also a battle plan. My battle plan for reverse engineering and getting you out of analysis paralysis. So here's a question. Comment below if you are feeling in paralysis in regards to how do I start? What do I talk about? What should I even say? People don't care about me. They don't like me. I don't, I'm not pretty enough. No matter what it is, comment below and tell me if you're one of those people that are in maybe just completely stuck in regards to what you should do, all right? I'm curious about if that, this is even valuable for, for a lot of you guys. Kat says, even if we don't know what to talk about or think we don't know enough, okay, that, I get it, that's a good point, this is gonna help you. Mike says, hey man, I enjoyed your content in the master's course, great. Uh, Sorendaran says, yes, I'm one of them. Okay, good, I appreciate the honesty, absolutely very, very important to be honest, okay? So, check this out, okay? So, when it comes to how do you get started? What do you do? The number four, one thing that you gotta do is research. And what I mean by research is specifically making a list of competitors. And that's why I have it here. Make a list of what? Competitors. And I know one of you guys are gonna be telling me, Manuel, my business is very unique and I don't have competitors and listen, if you don't have competitors, you don't really have a business unless your name is Elon Musk or unless your name is Steve Jobs. These guys were actually out there in front of the world and creating technology that didn't even exist yet. And yes, they didn't have any competitors. In your case, generally, 
99.99999% of you guys are going to have competitors. So you got to figure out who they are. They do exist. You're not that special. I'm not that special, all right? So you got to figure out who out there has a product, a service, a business that is somehow similar to what your business is and what you do. Their products and their offerings are similar to what you offer and what your products are. Whether you have an Amazon brand, whether you're a realtor, whether you're an e-commerce entrepreneur, whether you have a software, you have a service, no matter what you are, you have somebody out there in the world, in your country, that is probably doing something very similar to what you're doing, and a lot of them are not doing it correctly, but a lot of them are having success. So you want to do a research. And at this point, at this stage, step one and two, is that you want to figure out what is your list of competitors. And what I say to people is that, look, I want you to make a pretty big list. And when I say a pretty big list, I'm talking about make a list of 50 competitors, 50 of them, all right? Make a list of 50 people, businesses, that now are going to help you with the rest of the steps. All right, so you want to make that list because that's, I'm talking about this is your process to becoming a creative. You want to get your creativity started. You want to make sure that you get things going and start getting some ideas rolling because it's like, you know how the uh, offers, uh, book offers, uh, the writers, they have been talking about this thing called writer's block for ages, right? It gets to a point that they don't even know what to write about. Even then, being super creative, and it happens to me because I happen to be a copywriter myself. I know how to write messages, something that I developed throughout the years. Sometimes I sit down and I don't know what to write about. If you guys have access to my course, the Facebook Masters, which you can still access for the next 13 days. What is today, John? The 17th? 13 more days you can access the course. Um, in it, every single lesson has a, an article of sorts in it. That was me writing it. So sometimes I actually had to write uh, a lot of descriptions and information about it so people can understand what it is that I'm covering on that video. So sometimes you will wonder, what the heck do I write about? I don't even know. I, I mean, what do people, and then you just want to go away and drop everything and drop the pen and go and leave. That is actually very, very common for people that are creatives. How do you get your creativity going? How do you get your creative juices flowing? You research. You understand what other people are doing. You make a list of your competitors and you look at them for inspiration ideas. And I'm gonna give you guys the tools to get that done exactly today. And then I'll see if you guys have any questions for it. And then we'll try to get them answered. Kathy says, how do I access that course? Kathy, manuelsuarez.com forward slash expansion. Obviously I haven't done a good enough job of letting everybody know about uh, my humanitarian campaign. So I am putting it here in the comments and the comment is pinned if you guys want to get access to that. The course is available for free for the next 13 days. It's a $2,000 course. No upsells, no credit cards, no nothing. All right. Um, so you got to make that list of competitors. And once you have that list, you're going to move on to studying social channels. All right. What do I mean by that? Well, you look at their Facebook page. You go back and you see throughout their history what they have done, what content they put out there organically. I'm not talking about paid advertising. There's two things that you can do on social media. You can do organic content, which just gets posted there naturally for free without investing advertising on it, or you can actually create content and advertise it to reach more people. Simple example over here, just to be very practical with you guys, I am inside my Facebook page right here. You should be seeing that uh, here. Let me see for a second. Yeah, you see my Facebook page here. I'm gonna look for a sponsored ad. So for example here, this guy right here, that's Ollie, right? That's Ollie Rodriguez. He's uh, from my uh, group right here. He's one of my top guys, uh, Chief Operations Officer of AGM. Uh, and he's even saying, Manuel is going live soon, stay tuned. He's the one that's promoting the uh, 15 day challenge. All right. So uh, that's an example of content, right? And that's organic. He's not paying for that. What's a paid one? Well, this one right here, look at this one. This is on my Facebook newsfeed. That is a sponsored ad. Shopify Plus is paying for that particular spot right there. Learn how Jungalo increased returning customers by 
26% and increased sales 61%. Read their story, okay? That is a an actual paid advertising. So you see how there's two worlds. Let's keep going over here. Nancy Cartwright, a good friend of mine, an actual client uh, from AGM. She is, if you don't know who she is, that's the voice of Bart Simpson. Uh, any of you guys don't know who Bart Simpson is, you might not live in the United States, because I, I don't know, this guy is huge across the world. But um, Bart Simpson is an absolute legend, right? So this is the voice. And uh, she's doing content. That's organic content. Who's that in my driveway? Oh, just a gardener. Never mind. Uh, okay, so this one, Traffic and Conversion Summit, uh, even though they do a lot of promotion, you can see here that this is not a sponsored because under where it says yesterday, it will say if it's a sponsored ad or not. So that one is not sponsored. That is organic. This right here, this is my dad's post uh, from our brand, Metabolismo TV, which you guys might have heard about if I've talked about I've talked about it quite a bit. John Loomer Digital, that's a, that's a competitor. Talk about um, actual competitors for myself, right? I, I don't really care about it uh, because uh, I, I actually appreciate people that are in my industry that I've actually learned things from, from him throughout the years. So I don't, I don't consider him a competitor. I consider him somebody that is, is actually on my same market and I'm not trying to take his business and he's not trying to take my business. Uh, Dr. Rick Berg, look at that. This, this one, notice something that's different on this one. It says sponsored right there. Uh, that right there means that we are paying for that spot. Uh, AGM is paying to find a spot inside this particular feed for Manuel Suarez. This is actually my personal feed on my personal profile. And you can see here we have an actual carousel ad. Uh, we're promoting the Keto Challenge. You have a carousel ad. And we are paying for that spot. And that's just basically the simplicity of paid versus sponsored, okay? So um, just wanted to give you guys that basic, basic information on how social media advertising works. The same thing happens on, on Instagram, the same thing happens on Facebook, and very shortly the same thing is going to happen on Instagram TV at some point. So we got Facebook, Instagram, we got Messenger, Instagram TV. All these platforms are opportunities for you to get your message as an advertiser in front of them. But there's two things that you gotta do. You gotta do organic, which is your content strategy, and then you gotta do paid, which is your content strategy distributed via advertising. So you can reach more people that if you only did organic, you would never reach. We do both. At AGM, we do both of them. You're gonna see me omnipresent. You're gonna see Manuel Suarez everywhere in as many places as possible. You see me on Facebook, on Instagram, on Instagram TV. You see me on stories on Instagram, on Facebook stories. You see me on LinkedIn. You see me on TikTok. You see me everywhere, right? I can tell you there's two places that I don't do anything in, which is Snapchat and Twitter. I think we were doing something on Twitter. I don't think we were ever doing something there. It was never one of my favorite platforms. But any opportunity that you have to get your message out there, that's an opportunity to spread your message and your word and get people's attention so you can eventually sell them something. Remember the following route, right? Omnipresence. You gotta do, you gotta do uh, omnipresence and provide value. You gotta build audiences and then you can actually sell them things. That's the sequence that most people have upside down and that's why they fail. The secret to social media is just that. On social media, people that fail are generally failing because they're not providing value first. They're not, on first contact, building a relationship. They're simply just trying to sell them something, okay? Kat says, Dr. Berg is a phenomenal marketer. You got it, Kat. Well, let me just clarify this. Dr. Berg is a phenomenal content creator. We, AGM Marketing, are phenomenal marketers. Our job has been to get Dr. Berg in front of millions of people. That's what we do. Dr. Berg has trusted us for years for us to be able to run his marketing. He's an incredible marketer and businessman and content creator, but he's actually more than anything an incredible humanitarian guy providing value, and we are the ones doing the marketing to sell his products. So the products that are being sold of Dr. Berg around the world uh, and around the United States particularly are being sold by AGM, my organization. Okay, so I got Mike saying, my content, I'll get to more questions guys along the way, so if you guys, guys wanna put them in, we'll be here for a while, probably another 20 minutes. 
My content assignment is a time-sensitive idea for your campaign. Should I just upload it through the portal in the course or is there a better place to send it? Uh, Mike, send an email to support training.com. Support training.com. So John says, do you choose where to advertise? Can you select where your ads go? Absolutely, John. You absolutely got that, all right? And I can show you that very simple. Let me just go ahead and answer that question right now, okay? So I'm gonna be sharing my screen here, okay? And you can see it here. I'm gonna open up the ads manager here. And let's open up one of these ads on, uh, on an account here, just a random account. Let me see if I can show you guys this here. I'm gonna refresh here. And I'll try to show you guys uh, just that particular question that John just answered uh, as of right now. I'm gonna open up any of these things here. This first one, this is an actual campaign to sell a particular product. And I'm gonna go ahead and open this one right here. And this is the ad set. Uh, this is the Facebook Business Manager. In this Business Manager, I'm actually selecting what objective. Do I wanna generate sales? Do I wanna generate video watchers? Do I wanna generate uh, messages? Do I wanna, what do I wanna accomplish? And then I select an audience. And I also select a placement. So for example here, uh, you will see that I'm selecting a lookalike audience, people that are similar to people that have purchased a particular product. I want to do United States. And also, at the bottom, there's a section set that says placements. So I can do automatic placements, or I can edit and select my own placements. And look at all the placements options. You have Facebook, uh, audience network, Instagram, you got Messenger, you got Facebook news feed, you got Instagram feed, you got Facebook view feed, uh, video feeds, Facebook, Facebook right column, Messenger inbox, and the list goes on and on, guys. Uh, Instagram, uh, you wanna do in-stream. These in-stream ads are the ones that play in between videos, and they're usually about 15 seconds long, and you have to watch the whole thing. Uh, so if you don't want one of these placements, you check it off, as simple as that. If you want to have them automatic, then Facebook is just going to place them based on what they believe is going to help you get the most results. Look at this one. Even apps and sites, they have expanded the reach to applications and sites off of Facebook. So this is all possible on the Facebook platform, on the Facebook world. Okay, so to answer that question very simply, that's all something that you can learn John inside the Facebook Masters program and it's taught in detail. So again, this particular Facebook Live is meant for practitioners, all right? If you're not a practitioner, you shouldn't even be here. I wanna to talk to people that are doers, all right? I wanna to talk to people that can actually watch this particular video and get to work and get excited. That's how I became successful. I listened to other people. I had a series of people that I paid attention to and I got into practice and I got stuff done. I'm gonna do a little drill in a second with you guys when it comes to competitors. And I'll tell you the people that I have followed the most over the years and I have learned the most from, just off the top of my head, because I can make a list of competitors and then I can go into detail understanding what they're doing in order for them to be able to get their message, even in a COVID-19 environment, okay? So, okay, study social channels. You wanna understand how they're doing on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. What are they doing in as many places as possible? So again, just to go back, if you're, if you're joining us late, you might wanna just go and watch this replay, or if you're watching the replay, get to the beginning of it. So, research, make a list of your competitors, study social channels, create a document, with your favorite, what do I mean by favorites? I mean your favorite post, your favorite organic things that you've seen. You like that article very much, you like that video, you like that promotion, that uh, recipe, you like that, uh, that podcast that they promoted. Whatever it is that you like, create a document with all these things with the name of the competitor and the other, the other things that you saw that you can save a link from that post and post it on that document. You can do, use a Google Doc, you can use a Google Sheet, whatever it is that you like for documentation, go ahead and create that list. And then we wanna talk about this today. Research the ad library. Research the ad library. If you guys don't know what this is, comment below. Let me know. I'm super curious about it if you guys do not know what the Facebook ad library is. Tell me I don't know. Uh, no idea. Whatever it is that you want to say. I'm super curious about this. If you do know, tell me, yes, I know. I've used it. Or whatever it is that you want to tell me. Tell me, do you know what the Facebook ad library is? All right. 
I'll wait for some comments over here. I got a bunch of you guys here. So Rendaran says, I don't know. Okay, let's see what else. By the way, guys, help me spread the word. Click that button that says share. Help me reach more people. Hannah says, I don't know. All right. Uh, Amari says, no clue, boss. Okay. Uh, Shubran says, I don't know. Um, Jojo says, I don't know what it is. I don't know what that is. Kathy says, uh, Wendy says, I don't know. Okay, good. A lot of you guys don't know. All right, so get ready to get blown away. All right, because again, I'm going to handle your analysis paralysis. This is going to go away. First, you've got to make a decision that you want to handle that. If you want to binge watch during this weekend, Narcos, Mexico, season two, that's a different story, all right? But if you actually want to take the bull by its horns, if you want to get the coronavirus and be in control over your own destiny instead of letting the coronavirus be in control over your own destiny, your own business, then you want to go ahead and get all this done. Again, this is your battle plan to be able to make all this happen, all right? We're going to talk about the ad library. And I'm going to show you how to access that data from your competitors. You're going to save your favorite ads. And then you're going to use those ads to get ideas. And then you're going to get in motion. You're going to get in motion. You're going to act. You're going to start getting those things done and just get started. Just like I showed you guys that Ollie, who's one of my guys right now, is actually pushing himself to produce a lot of content. That's what I want to do with you guys. you got to push yourself and just make it happen. I did that myself for years. I had to push myself and convince myself to make things happen and to move things forward. Okay, awesome. So let's talk about the ad library. What is that? What the heck are you talking about, Manuel? Is this something illegal? Black hat? Uh, is it something that I'm not supposed to be paying attention to? Well, before we get into that, let me go back to the whiteboard for a second. And let me make a list of my quote-unquote competitors. Who are my competitors, all right? Who are the Facebook Ninja competitors? If you guys want to comment below and let me know what your thoughts are, who are my competitors, I will absolutely welcome those, all right? My competitors. If I were to do a list, trust me, I have done it myself. If you guys know me, you know that I walk the talk. I don't generally talk about things unless I first walk it myself, all right? So let me know. I'll tell you, this is what I believe. People that I have followed from the beginning of my entrepreneur era, all right? At the beginning of my evolution, all right, there's this person that you might have heard about or not. His name is Jason Flatland, okay? I have actually have never talked about my own learning path, all right? Uh, Flatland, right here. This individual right here taught me all the basic things that I, that I learned about Amazon that helped me take my business on Amazon to the next level. He hasn't been doing a lot of content recently or pretty much none at all. Um, one of the best webinar deliverers that I've ever seen in my life. I don't even know if that's a word, deliverers. But if not, you know what I'm talking about. Jason Flatland, he's a competitor, all right? Another person that I followed shortly after that. This individual is a very good friend of mine now. But before he was a very good friend of mine, he was my mentor and he was my teacher. And for a few years, I learned from him every single day about Amazon brands, about e-commerce, about marketing, about copywriting. So much. I absolutely learned so much from this individual. I owe him a lot. And he knows that. And that's why he uses me for, I'm one of his number one teachers for his audience right now because of that, because he has a big audience uh, when it comes to Amazon e-commerce entrepreneurs. Ben Cummins, absolutely a rock star. Competitor, all right? Let's see who else. The great Gary Vaynerchuk, all right? Again, just to clarify, I am not really talking about people that are actual competitors of mine because I don't really compete with them. I look up to them. But if I were to do my research of people that have similar products and services and offers, these ones are it, right? For example, Jason Flatland, he teaches people how to deliver webinars. I, I do a lot of that myself too. I do a lot of webinars and I teach people a lot. Ben Cummins teaches people about Amazon and teaches people about e-commerce. I do a lot of that myself. He has a monthly program. I have a monthly program. Uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, he has an agency. It's called Vayner Media. It's a big agency. He has like a thousand employees. I'm a baby. I have 60 employees. This guy, he's built an agency from scratch. Same place, same way that I did. So uh, he will be a competitor. 
Uh, another individual that I follow for many, many, many years, which I absolutely love, and some of you guys might know who this guy is, Russell Brunson, one of my favorite, favorite guys out there, uh, business owners. It doesn't get much more real than that. He's the founder of ClickFunnels. That's another competitor, right? It's a great, great guy, right? And then you have uh, other people along the way. There's a lot of other people that I've actually gathered information from here and there. For example, John Loomer. He's a Facebook ads expert, all right? He's a great, great guy. Um, very humble, very hardworking, great, great teacher. There's another great teacher on the subject of Facebook. Her name is Marie Smith. Absolutely love Marie. Beautiful lady, one of my favorite people in the world. But she also has a lot of Facebook training. There's uh, people like uh, that I've learned things from. Amy Porterfield. Okay. So do you see, I'm just taking this off the top of my head, guys. Amy Porterfield, she teaches people about online programs and online courses. Uh, these people, all of them, I highly recommend. All of them. If you guys are looking for more people to consume content uh, of, content that's going to help you thrive and expand, highly recommend any of these guys here. I'm not going to put anybody on that list that I don't think is going to help you a lot. Um, these guys right here are powerhouses, right? They are competitors. So I want to show you guys how am I going to find data about what they are doing on social media. Because if I do that, I can follow this route right here. These are my competitors, agreed? You got to make your own competitors. Let me see if somebody else commented my competitors. John Phoenix commented, is that you, John? Yeah, he said Grant Cardone, absolutely. He's a big, big dude, awesome guy, very dedicated to his passion, to his work and everything, right? Let's see what else. Nobody else commented, oh, well, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, R R Agun says Russell, absolutely, I agree, all right? Okay, good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now. So I did my research, I made a list. Obviously, the research is not going to be like that. You guys have to be more like on the computers on the Facebook pages, on the social channels, on YouTube, on Instagram. You gotta be everywhere and you gotta do that real research. You gotta do online. Search for your keywords and find out what shows up. Go to google.com and if you have, for example, I don't know, uh, a health brand that you sell weight loss supplements, search for weight loss on Google and find out what are the top results that come up so you can actually get a list of actual people and brands that are your competitors. If you are an accountant, Search for accounting in your city or whatever it is. Search for tax accountants. Unlimited. The ability that you have to be able to find this data is pretty much unlimited. So you got to get to work and research. Google, Facebook. That, this is very simple, guys. If you go over here, I'm going to go back to my computer for a second. If you go over here and you search on Facebook and you do a search like, for example, um, Let's do a random search. Let me just refresh this page. Let's see, what do we search for? Let's search for, um, I'm gonna search for, somebody give me an idea, let's see. Um, real estate. Okay, there's a lot of realtors out there, okay? So I can search for real estate right here. And let's see what shows up on the search bar. I can start seeing pages, first of all, the ones that are close by, Tampa Bay Real Estate. Tampa Real Estate, that's a group one over here. Uh, obviously, I'm in the Tampa Bay area. You can see here, right here, Real Estate, that's an actual page. Uh, you can see um, people that talk about real estate. Uh, there's different people. There's brands that I'm connected with, for example, Origin Clear. People posting things about real estate. Um, you got to get some research done. If you get the research done on these platforms, you will find a lot of data. Sometimes platforms like Facebook are underrated as search engines because they're not. YouTube is a search engine, Google is a search engine, Amazon is a search engine, but Facebook has a really, really powerful search engine that can help you find a lot of data in regards to what your business is that you can utilize it to get yourself out of the analysis paralysis as to what to do. Research, make a list, study social channels, create a document with your favorite posts on these social channels from these competitors. Research the ad library Save your favorite ads, get ideas, get emotion, okay? So, the ad library. Let's talk about this for a few minutes. How do you find this ad library? Well, it's very, very simple. This ad library, if you go to Google, uh, I'll show you over here. If you go to Google and you search for, might be a little bit better if I, if I do it over here. So, let's check this out. Facebook ad library. 
any of you guys that are watching this, you have the absolute capability of being able to do this exact search. So the first thing that, first result says at library Facebook. I'm gonna go ahead and open this one up. Let me go ahead and, um, and put myself here for a second. And I'll show you guys what, what I usually do on this particular place. Okay, so now you can, you guys can probably see me in a little corner. There we go. Okay, so yeah, if I'm here on the ad library, I'm gonna go ahead and search for any of these competitors. So let's look at Russell Brunson. And immediately I get a couple of things show up. I got Russell Brunson, um, 629,000 likes. And then I got another one called Russell Brunson Fanatics. And then I got Russell Brunson free book. There's even, there's even a page for that, that's intense. And then Russell Brunson fan. The one that I'm interested in is the first one, Russell Brunson, 629,000 likes. So I am inside the ad library on Facebook. What is this library about? This library, okay, and I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to say. This library is basically a place, I don't know if you guys remember, in 2019, Facebook was harshly criticized by the entire um, Senate, Congress, uh, leaders, businesses, and they were massively attacked in outside, in the public world, in the public eye, no other company has been more attacked than Facebook because fake news, because of, uh, you know, they're, I'm, I'm allowed, they, the, the whole thing began, we're not gonna talk about that right now, but the whole thing began because they are, they were uh, involved on a big scandal with a company called, uh, I forgot about that right now because it's been a while, but Camden or, something like that, uh, uh, Cambridge Analytica, I got it, Cambridge Analytica. And this, this company was uh, out there buying um, leads uh, incorrectly and selling them uh, to other people and manipulating the system. That got Facebook in a lot of problems. Because of that, Facebook has been rolling out the ability to give users and everybody in the world data about what happens on the platform. Nothing is confidential anymore, nothing. Not what Trump does, not what the government does, not what I do, not what you do. You can find out exactly to the exact minute detail what any competitor is doing out there on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. No matter what that, what that is, it's all public information. Active ads and inactive ads, it's all available in the Facebook ad library. Facebook has a word for that, and they like to call that word, they call it, Transparency. They are trying to accomplish transparency on their platform, meaning that, hey, uh, just so you guys know, we got nothing to hide. If you're wanting to advertise on Facebook, then you're gonna have that information available to the world out there and everybody's gonna be able to know exactly what you're doing, no matter what that is. In some cases, you can even find out the advertising budget they're putting into it is that detail, okay? So that's the ad library. So let me go back here to uh, my little window here on my computer. You see me here again, and uh, let's see. Yeah, somebody says Ty Lopez. Yeah, Ty, okay, uh, Ty, I, I never really gotten into um, Ty, that's for sure, never gotten really into him, but I know he's a big player himself, and I saw him speak live one time. Uh, so, okay, so we're here in Russell Brunson's page, okay? So you can see here, look at this. Oh my God, I told you guys, right? This is actually newer data. Um, you can see here exactly in detail what I'm showing you. Let me just zoom in on this. Total spent by page on ads related to social issues, elections, or politics, May 28, 2018 to uh, all the way to 2020, 4,239. Now, the truth of the matter is that Russell doesn't really invest advertising dollars on political 
or elections or social issues, but sometimes Facebook tags it as such, depending on what was said. So there, he's saying, Facebook is saying on the ad library, hey, this person advertised so much. So you want to find out how much the Trump campaign is advertising? You can find out right there, all right? I know you're probably curious and you're trying to say like right now, like, Manuel, can you go ahead and do it right now? No, we're not here to talk about Trump, all right? But you can see here that all the ads that, that Russell is running are all here. And you can even see when they started. So if I need to get some creative ideas on what I need to do myself to be able to actually get social media influence and reach more people and eventually be able to sell more of my agency services or my products, then I can just go and look at Russell just like that. It says started running, look at this example over here. Started running on 17 April 2020. After analyzing 100,000 users, I asked myself, what are the top 1% doing differently than the other 99% or not? Want to know what I discovered? I put together my research into a new masterclass to reveal everything. Okay, so you can even see over here the, um, what they call the call to action, which is to learn more, and the headline. And I can click on it, and I can even see the exact funnels, guys. So you know how Russell Brunson talks about funnel hacking? This is funnel hacking next level because you're going for the entire journey. You're looking at the Facebook ad, you're looking at the actual funnel, you're looking at the exact offer step by step so you can get ideas on how to do copy, how to adjust your message, how to do your thing so you can actually be able to get your own brand going. So I'm gonna go back here to the ad library and let's look at another example, okay? So that's Russell right there. So you can see all of them and you can go back here in time, guys. Look, that's Grant Cardone right there. Uh, being used by Russell. So you can see here that he leveraged Grant Cardone and he's showing a video in which Grant is actually building a funnel on his plane, all right? So this is an ad that they're running. These guys are running some heavy ads, right? So you can see it all here, like they're going crazy trying to build the Russell Brunson brand. Interesting, right? Why isn't he going crazy building the ClickFunnels brand? I know they are still doing that, but Russell Brunson is a driving engine, just like myself. I have clients in AGM marketing because of me, because I'm out there doing content and they come in because I capture the attention. And because of that, people know that I'm for real. And now they say, I wonder if AGM can do a better job than me on marketing. Let me go ahead and reach out to them and find out if he can help me too. And that's the way it is. So I am a personal brand and I'm the one that I'm bringing the, the energy into our company, in this case called AGM. So let's look at another one of our competitors. Let's see. Uh, let's look at one of my favorite guys in the world, somebody that I follow for a long time. I read his book, one of the books that uh, changed my life the most uh, in, my, in my entire history as an entrepreneur is Gary Vaynerchuk's book. When I, when I, when I read his book uh, called, um, it was um, Jab, 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 Right Hook was one of them. And, and the other one was called, the first one was called Crush It. It absolutely changed everything for me. I started understanding how this roadmap worked of providing value first. So I got a lot from him in regards to this particular strategy many, many years ago. So let's see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and look at it again because I got another page there. Gary Vaynerchuk. Okay, so over here. Three and a half million likes and you can see there's 7.9 million followers. So pay attention to this for a second. Okay, check this out. All right. So do you notice that also the Instagram content is also added here, the ads? Look at Gary. He has how many likes on Facebook and how many followers on Instagram. So I'm going to be able to see the ads on both places. All right, so who's already going crazy with ideas here? I know a lot of you guys are probably getting ideas as to how to go about researching your competitors, but you got to go through that particular flow over there. Okay, so check this out. So we got Gary over here. Uh, you can see his page. It was created in 2009. So that's an interesting piece of information, right? Because now you can see you can see what it takes. This guy has been putting the hard work for 11 years, guys, for 11 years, right? So you can see that, and uh, let's uh, check it out. You can see some ads over here. Uh, for example, I've accepted the all-in challenge. He was talking about this the other day. He's been talking about this. It's a challenge that they're putting together for all these great people, and they're putting the audiences to donate $10 and maybe doing raffles. So he's promoting this. Uh, he's promoting content. He's promoting value. There's two things that he's promoting. He's not promoting anything else. He's promoting two things right now, all right? Interesting, all right? So that tells me something, all right? He is following the formula. He's not promoting services right now. He's building audiences. He's not selling anything. Now, Gary, on his Facebook page, doesn't really sell anything. He does sell wine library, and he does sell other things. But generally, it's all about providing value. 
And that's how he goes about it. But he's been promoting a lot more content, and right now he's only doing two of them being advertised. Pretty cool. Okay, let's look at another guy. Let's see what this guy is all about, all right? Manuel Suarez. So that guy right there, that's not him. This guy right here, okay? So 5,000 likes on Facebook and 11,000 uh, Instagram followers. So let's look at that right there, okay? And let's see. So this guy created his page, oh, man, just four years ago? Ah, he just got started. Uh, and he had people, he had pe his people working in the United States, he has 11. He has people, he has 13 people working in the Philippines. He has people working from Costa Rica, from Greece, from Mexico. Guys, you see that you got all that data in there? I got 24, 25, 20, 27 people that are in my page managing something there. Whoa, I didn't start there, that's for sure. I can promise you that. It was just me, just a few years ago. Okay, so... Um, you can see here, what am I running as an ad? Okay, so I'm promoting my humanitarian mission. I don't even know. I'm discovering this with you. I don't even know what the guys are promoting themselves uh, in their end because they do a lot of the things without coordination. Okay, so they're promoting this. Are there any videos being promoted here? Let's see. Oh, yeah, Instagram videos. Why does content matter? Instagram, should you, should you boost posts? Three types of audiences. Uh, and then we're doing the uh, providing value with the campaigns for... COVID-19 and how to go about winning on these campaigns. So you guys get the idea. You can see the videos. Let's, for example, let's go ahead and click on one of these things. I can click on it and I can see the video there on the platform in detail and see exactly what this individual is doing, all right? So uh, you guys get the idea, right? Uh, comment below and tell me if you're blown away with this and if you're ready to get into action with it. Because on the Facebook ad library, you're gonna find all that data and just going back over here, over the sequence of steps, okay? So you got your battle plan for um, the world of, uh, how are you gonna win in the world of social media today? You got that battle plan, right? Omnipresence, you're gonna provide value, you're gonna educate, you're gonna be a stabilizing influence, you're gonna talk with reality, you're gonna build audiences, you're gonna be able to sell to your best audiences. Okay, good. Now, how do you go about talking to them? What do you do to actually sell to people? How do you go about marketing to them? Where do you invest your advertising dollars? Where do you get your content going? How do you move your content forward? All right, this is what you do. Research, make a list of competitors, study social, social channels and what do they do? Create a document with your favorite posts and your favorite overall engagement. What they're doing that you liked. What you don't like, you don't need to put on that document because if you, if you liked it, it can help you with your creative ideas. Research the ad library. We just went over that right now, the simple examples on how to use the ad library to find what your competitors are doing so you can now qu get creative on it. You don't need to copy and paste. You don't need to just download a script and repeat that. You need to just use it as an idea because now you're gonna save your favorite ads from the ad library, look at the videos, look at the copy, save the copy, look at the call to actions, look at the structure of the actual ad from top to bottom. Some of these guys, just so you guys know, let me give you a warning, you're not going to see these guys running ads because many brands are not running ads. So don't be surprised if one of your competitors is not running ads, it's normal. You gotta look at the ones that are running ads that are walking the talk, investing advertising dollars because they wanna continue expanding no matter what the economy says, no matter what the government says, no matter what the, the uh, World Health Organization is saying, you wanna continue expanding because, hey, you either grab the bull by, the, by its horns and expand or you sit back and you see the world succumb. And I'm not in that side, either a Debbie Downer or you're a positive. I am an optimist individual. So because of that, I want to continue taking control of my own destiny. So once you get your, your February ads, now you're going to go into create mode. You're going to go into your workshop. You're going to go into your studio and you're going to start creating. Get your ideas. What are articles are you going to write? What is your superpower? All right. Let's just, again, mention that particular word right there. Superpower. All right. I'm not trying to be here cliche, guys. I'm telling you. You gotta figure this out. What is your ability? What are you passionate about? What are you, as an individual, excited about talking to your husband, to your wife, to your friends, to your family, to your neighbors, in dinner tables, in parties, everywhere? What is the ability that you have to influence somebody else and use that to get ideas on 
All this research on how to structure your content, how to write the copy, what separation between the lines, uh, how to get that call to action, what videos should you promote, what graphics should you use, the simplicity of the advertising, the simplicity of the content itself, and now you get into motion. I'm changing colors for dramatic purposes only. You want to get into motion, all right? Again, I said it at the beginning of the webinar, at the beginning of this Facebook Live, I said it. If you're not a practitioner, you shouldn't have been here for the last hour, all right? This is only for practitioners. This is not for dreamers only. This is for dreamers that are practitioners that are willing to put in the work. If you put in the energy in place, you will eventually see yourself thrive. If you don't, you're going to keep on wasting your energy and see people pass you by and your dreams disappear right in front of you, all right? There you have it. There is the formula. Okay, so I have a lot of he people here. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, Shoban says, I learned new things about the ad library. Thanks. Exodus says, oh man, definitely blown away. Great. This is awesome. This is coffee. Yes, blown away, says Hannah. Love it. Ray says, hi. Hi. Okay, Jojo says, LOL. I'm sure I said something funny along the way, Jojo. Um, for like Amy. That's an interesting name. I love Amy. Yeah, I love Amy too. Um, Grant says, you're a superhero, Manuel. Ah, I have a lot of muscle. I got to work on that, okay? I absolutely have to work on that. I don't do enough exercise. Mike says, my goal is to build a business. That's a good goal, but that's not the goal. You can't have the goal of building a business, all right? The goal has to be, you got to change the world. Your goal is to influence the world with your knowledge. When you have that goal in mind, correctly in place, you can actually build a business. You have it upside down, all right? First, what effect do you want to create in life, in people? And then what business are you going to create to monetize the effect that you're creating? You are upside down, my friend, all right? Let's make sure that you put that in place because my goal is not to build a business, all right? My goal is to help as many business owners as I can be able to leverage the power of these platforms. Help as many people get trained so they can also take advantage of the social media ads wave and the social media wave of communication that we have in place. I know that by doing so, this is inevitable. I don't think about it, but I know it's inevitable. I'm going to have a line of people wanting to sign up for my services. Why? It is a loss of money in this universe, my friends. If you get attention, you get money. If you don't have attention, you don't have money. It's as simple as that. So I know that if I work and then put my passion, my heart and soul into grabbing attention, I am never going to struggle from a lack of money. I'm just not going to. Guys, not even, not even the people in this world that are completely dedicated to purpose, the, the popes, the Mother Teresas, these people, they don't struggle from a lack of money. They have more money than they could need. Now, they keep on using the, the world and get, getting all that money so they can feed their purpose. But these people, they don't think about money. But trust me, they have so much support from the world. They have so much people that are willing to help them, so many of them, that that's, they never need to put a plate. They, they, they personally never have a lack of food in front of them. Why? Because they are changing the world and they have the mindset. So look at that example, that extreme example. You as an individual are going to grow in direct proportion to the effects that you create out there in the world. If you create big effects, you can scale and you can grow. If you don't, nobody pays attention and you don't have anybody to sell your products and services to. All right? Very good. Mike, if you're already changing people's lives around, then that's great. I want you to put that purpose above, all right? And then building a business is going to be below it, all right? Because it is something that's going to happen and it's inevitable. Uh, Dr. Burke, he wants to influence a lot of people with his content and help people lose a lot of weight. He has a big business, but his purpose was there. My dad, same thing. Chick Corea, a musician, one of the top jazz players in the world, if not the top jazz player in the world. He has a business. Why? Because he wants to influence people with his music, all right? And the list goes on and on and on, right? That's just the way it is. Very good. Okay, guys, so thank you very much for being here. It's been now an hour. Um, help me spread the word. Help me share this Facebook Live. Hit that button right now before you get out. I know I have a lot of you guys here. If you guys are on YouTube, thank you for joining. Thank you for watching the replay. And um, it's right now the 17th of April. On the 30th of April, I closed down my humanitarian campaign to get a lot of people into my paid advertising program 
for free. All right, so manuelsuarez.com forward slash expansion. The link is in the comments. You can go and check it out right now and see the details of the particular offer, which doesn't require you to invest a single penny in it. And hopefully you take me up on it and I will see you inside the program and let me help you make you an expert marketer. All right, let's conquer the world together. I'll see you in the next one.